Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video we're going to react to 9-11 heroes surviving the biggest attack on US soil. So today is September the 11th. It is the 23rd year since, um, you know, the attack on the World Trade Center and Whenever you or I, whenever I sit back and think about what actually happened, it just it's just insane, you know, to actually think that planes were flown into skyscrapers and the amount of people that were lost. It's just it's wild. But then I think about the people that were were responsible for going in there and trying to put out the fires, trying to save the people. A lot of those people because of the amount of dust and debris in the air, they became very sick and died, you know? And uh, I just thought it would be a good idea just to watch a video um, that's gonna talk about those people, the challenges that they faced, you know, during that day and the, the days after that, because it wasn't, you know, this incident wasn't, um, like it, it stretched like quite far. So yeah, I just thought it'd be a good idea to do that. This just in, you were looking at obviously a very disturbing live shot wow. there. A plane has just Never crashed into just the World Trade Center here in New York City. We don't know anything more than that. We don't know if it was a commercial aircraft. Oh Crazy. my God, another plane has just hit, it hit another building. Oh my Flew God. right into the I've middle of it. I've never seen that angle before. It's exploding right now. You got people running up the street. Sean, it's me. I just wanted to let you know I love you. And I'm stuck in this building in New York. I just wanted you to know that I love you always. I think we have a terrorist act of proportions that we cannot begin to imagine at this juncture. If a popular novelist sat down and wrote a novel, people wouldn't buy this book because it would be so outrageous. This could never happen. I don't know what to tell young people about that day. I know when I die, the first thing I'm going to ask St. Peter is like, hey, what happened? How did this happen? Because I, I still have questions. It was my day off. It was a beautiful day. You know, really beautiful blue skies. It was going to be the morning of the mayoral primaries. They switched me uh, to do uh, election duty that day. Like every other morning, we were sitting around the table just uh, going over what was going on with the kids, with the family. I was in my bathroom taking a shower. And I had a window that faced south. And I heard what I thought was an explosion. At 8.46 a.m., American Airlines Flight 11 crashed into the World Trade Center North Tower, Building 1. It was one of four planes hijacked by 19 Al-Qaeda terrorists that day. Could you imagine walking in, like just walking around a city? I'm imagining just walking around London and just seeing a plane, like a passenger, like massive Boeing 747, flying into like... What would be the equivalent? Canary Wharf, somewhere like that. I just, I would think, am I, am I even awake? Is this real? Like it would be, it would be, it would just be surreal. At first, it seemed a tragic accident, an airplane off course. As I'm watching this, trying to figure out, do I have to go to work? The second plane hit and I saw it on TV and that was it. And all they seen was this huge fireball coming out of Tower 2, Crazy. out of the South Tower. And for a second, I, I didn't know what it was. I thought maybe just the building blew up. I ran downstairs, and I'm looking south, and both towers are on fire. And uh, it was stunning. With the second catastrophic strike, it became clear that the country was under attack New York City mounted its largest rescue effort in history, dispatching more than 2,000 firefighters, medical workers, and wow. police officers to Lower Manhattan. It was a little hard getting through the streets because there was debris all over. Mm -hmm. So they'd come out of the building from the plane hitting it. You gotta remember, the North Tower is fully engulfed. It, it, it's, it's, people are jumping out of the windows and you can hear them hitting the deck. It's just crazy because, you know, those people that were running in there, they probably weren't even thinking about their own safety that much. They were just thinking, let me just try and save people. 
Like they weren't thinking that the stuff that they were breathing in could affect could could affect their health for the rest of their life. They were just like, nope. Let me. I want to do my job and and help. There was this these popping sounds going off. We realized it was people that were either jumping off the building or or falling out of the building. I did not look. I was not going to look. I, I I'm very protective of my psyche. I, I I only need to see what I need to see mm. uh, in situations like this. And uh, but you can you couldn't close your ears. Rescue workers rushed in to help the more than 16,000 people still inside, putting their own lives on the line. Mm. Officers Bill Biuri and Mark DeMarco and their team entered the North Tower, Tower 1. We ended up at Stairwell C, and we started our climb up. We are running into other people. I said, just follow. Just covered in dust, man. Just completely covered. Put a wall down. It. When you get outside, I said, try not to panic. I said, but run. So get away from the side as fast as you can. And all of a sudden, the lights went out, the building went dark, uh, ceiling panels were falling down. It sounded like a freight train uh, going by. And the whole place was shaking like an earthquake. With this, our uh, radio started getting very active. Uh, 15 floors down from the top, it looks like it's totally glowing red. On the inside, it's inevitable because I don't think this has too much longer to go. At 9.59 a.m., the 110-story South Tower, Tower 2, crashed down in just 10 seconds. Crazy. And that's when a little bit of shock started setting in because we knew what these buildings looked like. We knew how, how long they were, it took them to put them up. And for something like that to come down in, in a matter of seconds, Yeah, it was, it was just mind boggling. You, you, that's years worth of construction, years, maybe even like a decade or so, done in 10 seconds. You couldn't wrap your head around it. One of the officers that was outside, he put over the radio, he said, everybody who was in Tower 1, evacuated immediately. Get, get the hell out of there. DeMarco and Biori, along with Sergeant Michael Curtin and Officer John DeLara, saved civilians from certain death, ushering them from the stairway and lobby. The men then made their way from the North Tower to the adjacent building number 6. There, they met McNally and his partner, Claude Danny Richards. Then... Only moments later. One plane colliding with one twin tower. Oh my God. It's collapsed. It's collapsed. It's collapsed. It's collapsed. It's collapsed. It's collapsed. I it. The North Tower is coming down. Oh my God. It's insane, man. And we put our heads down and we held on to each other and we tried to become as small as we possibly could. And I just, I just, I just laid there and I remember saying goodbye to my, my wife and kids. I remember seeing all four of my kids one after another. I had time to get out one prayer, and it was, dear God, if you're gonna take me, please make it fast. Oh, that's horrible. That's horrible. Imagine, oh my God, having to do that? I'd be overcome with emotion, honestly. You know, that's how scared I was. I was terrified. I remember saying to myself, I said, is this death, is this what death is? And I, I was waiting for like a piece of steel to come through my back and out my chest or something. The 110-story North Tower landed on Building 6, blasting a crater through it, only a few feet from where McNally, Biori, and DeMarco were huddled. You've probably seen the large cloud dust. Well, we were in it. I had a respirator, and that became very clogged very quickly, and I couldn't breathe. And you start really panicking when you can't mm. breathe. All of a sudden, it was silent. And you're like, wow, I survived. I started moving my fingers and my toes. And I said, oh, I said, I guess that's a good sign. Mm. I figured I got my limbs. Yeah, I'm still in one piece. I'm still breathing. And I figured I was alive. Yeah. I don't know how long we were, we were there or how long we were in that spot. But we ended up getting up and we all met up. Visibility was still, was still horrible. Uh, little, little patches of fire were breaking out. And I said to myself, I said, the building collapsed, didn't kill me. I said, no, I'm gonna burn it death. Bill Beery yells out, he goes, I think I found a way out. I think there's a hole over here, a hole in the building. And we, we got this conga line and we'd go to try to get out. It was Mark DeMarco, me, and Billy behind me, you could still see our handprints on the wall as we were guiding ourselves blindly. 
we were able to climb out the windows out to the outside mezzanine level, which was facing West Street. The bridge was all collapsed. Honestly, this looks like the set of like a post-apocalyptic movie, you know? Like like a nuclear war's like happening. It just doesn't look like a, it doesn't look like New York. I mean, obviously it is New York because you can see these vans, but the damage and stuff, you know? Everything was dead silent. No cars, no birds, nothing. Wow. McNally, Biore, and DeMarco searched in vain for three NYPD officers who moments before had been right there with them. A search that would continue oh, for months on end. They couldn't find destruction. Mike Curtin, John Delara, or Danny Richards. And we didn't find them until the following spring. They were oh buried under the sheer weight of the World Trade Center. And they, they couldn't have been more than 20 feet behind us when, oh, uh, wow. when the towel came down. And that was, that was the focus of the rest of my days there, was making sure that people knew exactly where I thought these guys were, you know, so that we could recover their bodies. And to this day, I, still, I, I don't understand why, how, why I'm still here. Uh, there's a guiltiness about it. Mm, yeah, survivor's guilt, right? It's quite a common thing, isn't it? Because uh, there's a lot of them. They were uh, more talented. Uh, they're just better people than me. Uh, they, they didn't make it. I was able to come home. I was able to see my family. Uh, I was able to... He shouldn't feel guilty, man, you know? That's just the way it goes sometimes, you know? Like, it's hard, it's, it's hard though. It's really, it must be so hard for him. I was able to see my kids grow up. I'm fortunate, I'm lucky. You know, I, I thank God that I'm still breathing. But I inhaled a lot of stuff, and you know, sometimes that I don't think about it. But I know that there might be a ticking time bomb in my chest, you know. To this day, only sixty percent of the victims have been identified. Wow. Most only through traces of DNA, leaving more than one thousand families without any remains of their loved ones to bury and mourn. I miss my friends, even the ones who survived. They're not the same. There's a lot of guys who are coming down sick with cancers that are horrific. I think about 9-11 every day. I mean, uh, it's, it's not, it doesn't consume me where I, I feel I need to go see a shrink or, or seek help somewhere. Uh, I just don't ever want to forget it. I don't forget it. I uh, wear a memorial bracelet with the guys who perished that day. Sergeant John Coughlin, Sergeant Michael Curtin. <sighs> Sergeant Rodney Gillis, Detective Joseph Vigiano, Police Officer John Delara, Police Officer Vincent Dance. NYPD, ESU, Truck 7, 9 -11 And there's only been one time that this hasn't been on my arm. In 2013, um, I had open heart surgery. What I always try to tell people about that day is that there were so many heroes that day, so many heroes, uh, helping each other down the stairs and out into the lobbies. And it was, a, it was a day when we needed heroes and many of them showed up. Did we get everything right? Probably not. Did we do the best we could? Yeah. Yeah. And if you do your best, you know, that's all you can do, you know? Man. Crazy. Just crazy.
Man, it's so hard. It's 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 such a you can just see how it's affected and will continue to affect the survivors, you know, for the rest of their lives. It was just just to see the angle, that new angle that I that we saw near the start of the video. Just I keep saying to myself, like, imagine seeing that happen, knowing that there's people on board that plane and there's thousands of people in that building. Just just like that, you know, gone, gone. And that just changes the the path of history. Com like in a completely, had that not happened, had this event not happened, the world would just look so different. Like all of the things that happened as a consequence of that, the world would be a completely different place. And you just feel so bad for the people who, both the innocent people who lost their lives, but also, you know, the um, the the people that had to, you know, go in there, obviously doing their job and wanting to help and stuff, but the mental toll that that takes on them, you know, the ones that survive, like the guilt, the immense guilt, knowing that you've lost friends, like, and the families of your of the friends that are lost, you know, that have been affected by it. It's just sad, honestly really is sad and you've just got to hope that such a thing never happens again that's all you can really hope for thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed my videos please help me out by liking and subscribing